What's up guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at Kubuntu. Kubuntu is a distro very similar to Ubuntu as the name implies, but the main difference between Ubuntu and Kubuntu is that Kubuntu ships with the KDE desktop environment instead of GNOME. Now personally, I'm a big fan of KDE. It's very similar to the way that Windows is laid out. And since Windows was the OS that I was previously using before I switched to Linux, it made the transition from Windows to Linux that much easier. So if you're in the same boat currently using Windows and looking to switch to Linux, then Kubuntu is a very good pick for a distro. Now, I've already gone ahead and installed Kubuntu here in VirtualBox. The installation steps for Kubuntu are pretty much the same as Ubuntu. So if you want an install guide, you can just look at the first couple minutes of the Ubuntu video. One thing that I do suggest though, is that you install the NVIDIA drivers during the installation of the OS. Because I noticed that in my virtual box, when I didn't install the drivers, my GUI wouldn't start up correctly. So be sure to tick that box during the installation process, just like I recommended in the Ubuntu video. So with Kubuntu, we get a layout that, like I said, is similar to Windows. You have your start menu over here or application launcher as KDE calls it. And you can also use the Windows key to go ahead and start this up. I remember in some previous versions of KDE, you had to install this app called K Super Key alongside it because for whatever reason, you couldn't just use the window key by itself to activate the start menu. You had to do like a window key and then some other combination like Windows Control, Windows Shift, something like that. But I see that in the latest versions of KDE, they were able to fix that. So really good job to the development team. The layout of this start menu is more similar to the start menu on Windows 7 than the start menu of Windows 10 though, I would say. Which in my book, that's a good thing. I was a really big fan of Windows 7. It's a shame to see that Microsoft is no longer going to be supporting it. Support just ended for it earlier this month. So if you're currently on Windows 7 and you're looking to upgrade for Windows 10, well, you can save about a hundred bucks because I don't know if Microsoft lets you upgrade for free. I know typically to buy a Windows 10 installation, it costs like a hundred dollars or you could go pirate it and then, you know, that's gonna be hit or miss. You might have some weird uh, Russian root key, root kit inside of it. So you can go with Kubuntu and then that way you'll more or less be able to do the same things, but you don't have to worry about any type of weird hack software. Uh, we have our taskbar down here at the bottom, or panel, as I believe it's called in KDE. Now, you can add other panels if you want. You can go over here to add panel, and then you can add a different type of panel. There's many, many customizable options with KDE, so if I want to just make another default panel, it's going to go and it's going to add this at the top. And let's see, how can I get rid of this panel? Um, there we go, remove panel. So yeah, there's a lot of extensible customizability options within KDE. Uh, going back to our taskbar, we have all of our different status icons on the right hand side here. So same location that they default to in Windows. You got your clock, which you can click on to show a calendar. You've got your volume, which you can click on to adjust the volume of your various sound cards and applications that may be running. Uh, you've got your clipboard, which will show you recently copy and pasted things. I think it even takes things that you've just typed recently if you wanted to copy them. And this also saves across restarts because these are all things that I was typing in 
I believe to the software search manager because I wanted to see how many different things would come up in the GUI there if I could find anything obscure that didn't show up. Uh, so yeah, this stuff was all typed before I rebooted. So this remains persistent across reboots. You've got this uh, vault area, which basically just lets you create encrypted folders onto your system. And a new option that they've added is, uh, where is it? Here it is, the notifications. So usually it shows up over here, where now this new feature that they've added in KDE, I believe 5.16, is that you now have a do not disturb option. So anything that would normally pop up, like um, a download when it finishes or any other type of app notifications, you can just disable that system wide now. And you have options for how long you want to disable it for, so you can disable it for a specific amount of time or just until it's turned off. And you can also go into here to really specify and configure how you want this notification setup to work. Because like I said, in KDE, you're able to customize just about anything that you want. Now, KDE, or Kubuntu more specifically, ships with a lot of very easy to use software. Nothing that requires you to be a elite Linux nerd. So you've got your Firefox, you've got your LibreOffice, you've even got your software center. So you don't even have to use your terminal to install everything like you see me doing on the Gen 2 videos. Of course, you still could do that if you want. Um, I'm sure that there may be some applications that you can't find by searching here in the software center. I mean, I tried earlier with some of the more obscure apps that I use and they still showed up. But if you don't see it in here, you can just try to, of course, sudo apt get um, within your console and then you'll be able to install it that way. Now for customizing KDE, because I think that's the main reason that a lot of people use it, uh, you can do big sweeping changes here in the look and feel area. So this basically allows you to apply system-wide themes to your desktop. And by default, Kubuntu comes with Breeze and Breeze Dark, which I believe are more just KDE-specific themes. And then you have the Kubuntu theme, which is the default. Um, that's kind of a mix between Breeze and Breeze Dark, uh, with a little bit of transparency added. And you can also get more themes if you want. From here, there's a few different hundred ones that you can download here. Personally, my favorite one that I've found so far is the Artem dark theme. It's a nice looking dark theme that doesn't make things hard to read and it has transparency, but it doesn't go too crazy with the transparency. So it doesn't really make everything blend together. Now, if you want to make more fine tune changes, you can go into the workspace theme tab and then you can basically mix and match different aspects of the themes that you've downloaded. So you could use like maybe this breeze clock here. Um, yeah, sure, let's apply it. You could use a different cursor pack and of course you can get new cursors as well. Um, you can go over to the colors. So this is actually how the individual windows look with the buttons and the text. You can go ahead and you can change those, mix and match them. You can also get new color schemes and also install from a file. So you can probably find some themes at a third party place. Like if you ever go on Reddit's Unix porn subreddit, I know I've seen <coughs> I know I've seen KDE mentioned there a couple of times. So you can definitely find uh, more detailed themes that people have made elsewhere for KDE. All right, so this has been a look at Kubuntu. Again, nothing super special about it. It's a pretty straightforward Linux 
desktop. Um, again, if you're coming from Windows, I would say check this one out first because if you go with vanilla Ubuntu, that's more similar to how the Mac OS is laid out. Same thing with elementary OS. Um, you could try Linux Mint. The cinnamon is similar to how Windows is laid out, but I've always been a big fan of KDE. And a big thing that they've done in KDE recently is they've made it a little bit slimmer because back when I was using KDE, if I can type correctly, Back when I was using KDE around 2016, 2017, it used to idle at about one gig of RAM, but now they've managed to still give you all of this eye candy, all of this customizability, but they've managed to pack it into using less than one gig of RAM. So kudos definitely goes out to the KDE devs that managed to do it. It's good to see that people still value minimalism and not being a resource hog so that's it for this video guys hope you enjoyed it if you do leave a like on it and share it with someone who you think would find it useful